Hello and welcome back to the Dragonfly Daily where we're covering more topics on image processing, image segmentation, image analysis. If those topics interest you, then you are in the right place. My name is Mike Marsh. I'm the product manager of Dragonfly at ORS and I am your host as always of the Dragonfly Daily. You can follow me at Dragonfly Wizard on Twitter. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn or ResearchGate, but please visit our YouTube site. We're doing all of these videos, making them all available on YouTube as well as our other video content on how to use Dragonfly and how to do image processing for scientific imaging. We are on lesson 21 today. As you can note in this week's schedule, lesson 20 yesterday, lesson 21 today, lesson 22 tomorrow, then Thursday and Friday of this week, no Dragonfly Daily. So please visit the CCEM workshop registration if you want more Dragonfly content, or if you just want to catch lots of great content, two days of online workshop material all about image processing for electron microscopy. Now, so don't be look on the lookout for Dragonfly Daily on Thursday and Friday. We will return on Monday. So today's topic is lesson 21, objects analysis. As always, if you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. And we got a lot of love yesterday on Twitter. Thank you for engaging and, and sharing Dragonfly Daily with everyone so they can go, sure, go through and find the videos on YouTube. Please, if we, can get, uh, if we can get all of you to visit one YouTube video with one like and one comment, just put in a comment so we can answer your question. Find the video you like the most that you want people to see, ask a question, tell us what you thought was most useful in the video, or maybe what needs to be addressed in a future video. That sort of engagement on the video is exactly what we're looking for. If I get all of you to do that on one video, then I can stop hounding you on that in future lessons. So moving on, the category or the topic for today is object analysis. This is the quantitative analysis tool in Dragonfly for quantifying and characterizing your image segmentation. As always, we will be using Dragonfly 4.1 with a slightly customized experience described in the Dragonfly Daily Episode 6, Customizing Dragonfly. The topic, objects analysis, we'll be looking at how you can make measurements. Sometimes those measurements are shape-based, sometimes they're intensity-based. You can make custom measurements and those are supported in Dragonfly. You can uh, make those in Python or C++ on your own system. You can also take your custom measurements, put them in the infinite toolbox so other people can use them. So remember, if you're doing clever, innovative image processing and you're building it into your workflow and then publishing on it, you can make that same analysis workflow available for others, just like people have been doing in the ImageJ community for 20 years. So you can make those measurements available by others. We will look at taking your 3D and 2D on-screen views and coloring them according to a measurement. We'll also look at making interactive selections of different objects in your multi-object multi-ROI. We can do interactive selecting from the 2D views, from the 3D view, directly from the histogram, directly from the table. We'll also look at how you can do subgroup analyses. So you can make hierarchical analyses and break down your objects based on volume or aspect ratio and then further refine. So we'll have a quick look at that. The trained models can persist on machine. That shouldn't doesn't belong here. But it is important to note that the uh, custom measurements on your machine can be shared and can be shared with others through Infinite Toolbox or just uh, by copying to another system. You can also make selections of your objects and then you can export those to an ROI or export the whole table as a CSV for analysis outside Dragonfly. Now we're about to get started. The data that we'll be using today can be found on Digital Rocks Portal. So I'll show you where you can grab those data. If you go to Digital Rocks Portal, we're going to use two different data sets today. So I'm going to direct Google to Digital Rocks Portal. I'm going to click Browse Published Projects. Um, there is this one right here, the Appetite Grains from Rich Ketchum in the Jackson School of Geosciences at UT. So you can go to View Project and you can download directly from here. So the data set we're using is this data set, which is Identifier 812. And this data set you can download, but you can just download right here to download the entire project un and unzip it. And you'll see how I load that data from the zip file in just a moment. The second project we're using is the dry sand grains image that is found here in the hydrite bearing sand. I don't know why my uh, digital rocks portal page is not loading, but if we visit the hydrate bearing sand page, you can go here and find the multiple data sets. And we're using the dry sand pack saturated with air. This is a uh, digital rocks portal identifier number 476. So this is this large data set. And you'll also find that there is a video on YouTube where I show how to separate the grain. So if you did, I don't know, YouTube dragonfly watershed distance, uh, you would probably find the link to that video. So watershed transform and distance map tutorial. Have a look at that tutorial. It's a 10 minute uh, tutorial. And that is how I generate the data that I'm using for today's demonstration. Now I'm going to pop over to dragonfly and I'm going to load the appetite data. So I'm going to go to file import image files. Then I will uh, navigate to the file system. In this case, as I mentioned, it is a folder. I unzipped the folder. I called it Appetite Grains. And then you can navigate in the nested 
folders that are come out of the zip archive, you can navigate all the way to the point where you get to uh, object 216 and click on origin, and then you can choose 812 images. A lot of nested folders. Here I can select all the TIFF files. I can just do a control A and click open and next and uh, at this point, I can enter that the grain size is 5. Point, or the pixel size is something like 5.03. I'm not going to do any dimensional measurements today, so this is not critical. And I'll call these appetite grains and hit finish. So it loads the data in. We can see it in our Dragonfly workspace. Now, what I want to do is I want to do a segmentation and I want to do analysis on the segmented grains. I'm going to double click in this lower quadrant to go full screen. Um, actually, I'm going to double click in the lower right quadrant. You can always double click to toggle back and, forth, back and forth between full screen and an individual quadrant view, or I should say a multi view. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to segment and I'm going to turn on define range and I'm going to click upper Otsu. Now I see upper Otsu is giving me some of this uh, supporting bed that the appetite grains are sitting on. I don't want to get that so I'm actually going to further adjust. Let's get something like this. Now I do realize that I have the grain and I have some speckle here but that's okay. I'm going to click add to new, turn off define range and over here I'm going to label this my, I don't know, grains ROI and what I'm going to do of course, double click, of course I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to refine region of interest process islands. So what I want to do is I want to remove any set of pixels, any cluster or any island of pixels that's smaller than say 75 grains, or sorry, 75 pixels. Hit OK. And now any of those individual pixels that were isolated uh, are removed. And I still see some down here and maybe they're connected to something else or, or maybe they're connected to a grain. And we could look at that more closely or I could right click again and go to uh, refine region of interest process islands and maybe we could remove everything that's smaller than 125. I don't know if that'll help. Let's hit OK. Okay. Now uh, I'm going to go ahead and proceed. I'm going to right click on grains ROI and here under the connected components menu you see three options. I can create a new multi-ROI based on uh, connected components labeling with a 6 connectivity or with a 26 connectivity. Once you create it you can go into the analysis menu. So for example if I do 26 connected and I am now I have the multi-ROI, I can right click and I can go to connected components and choose analysis. So the button you see or the selection you see here, new multi-ROI analysis 6 connected, all that does is create the multi-ROI and then enter its analysis directly. So I have my multi-ROI, I'm going to turn off my ROI, turn on my multi-ROI and you can see I have these different grains labeled. Now I'm going to right click, go to connected components and choose analysis. Now that I have it loaded, what are we looking at here? I have this new interface and today's lesson is going to walk us through all of this interface. We saw it briefly in lesson four but now we're going to dive uh, much deeper. So here I am looking at a 2D section. I'm going to double click so I can see my 3D view and my 2D views. Now the first thing you'll note is the multi-ROI is not enabled for 3D rendering. If you want you can just click this checkbox and now it will be available for 3D rendering. Also I'll draw your attention over here to the 3D opacity settings. If I click once in the 3D window they're no longer grayed out. So I could dim all of the non-ROI non pixels. I could turn up the highlight, etc. so we can see what it looks like. Now, we have this segmentation and we might want to make measurements. So the first thing I will do on this panel is I'll click the blue button which enables me to access measurements. What you'll see here is you'll see measurements on the right and these are measurements that require no data set. And what that means is these are shape based measurements so I can do volume and I can do uh, aspect ratio and phi and theta. These are measurements that don't, re don't require any sort of data set. If you choose a data set now you could do something like well report the mean intensity etc. So once you click OK it'll take all of those measurements whether they're the no data set required shape measurements or the, whether they're intensity data set based measurements it'll, it'll measure them all and so now we have it says 169 objects and we have the volume and the phi and the theta and the aspect ratio of all of them. Now if you do a quick look over on the left hand side you will see I do not have 169 grains and if I do a single click on volume now everything is color coded by volume and we see a whole bunch of little red speckles here and little blue speckles here so it turns out we have a bunch of noise that has been segmented as a grain. If we click this button and we look at a histogram of the volume we'll see we have this object over here which is that very a large cluster of pixels and we could choose to remove it and removing it 
we can do it different ways. If I go back to the table and I sort volume by descending, I can just select this one object. It is now selected and I can delete it from the ROI and now it's removed from the ROI. Now we'll get more into pruning our multi ROI here in a few minutes. So we saw the first button which allows us to make additional measurements and now I want to call your attention to the second button. This is a button for selection. Now I'm going to double click on this view so we can see the 2D view. Now I have a table over here and I have a graphical view over on the left. I'm going to click this button. This will put me in the objects analysis state. When I'm in the objects analysis state, I can control click on an individual grain and it becomes selected. So as soon as it's selected in the 2D view, you will also see it selected on the table. You can make selections with control clicks on the 2D table or in the, in the 2D view. Now while I'm in the 2D view, I'm now going to draw your attention to this. There is a slider for the intensity of your selection and a separate slider for the intensity of the complement of your selection. So if I don't want to see any of those grains colored, so now you can see uh, with very strong contrast the grains that are selected, but you could also do this and say, show me all the grains that are not selected. So if I go to the 3D view, I can do the same thing. I can set my intensity in 2D and 3D. So if I show everything that is not selected, now I could come through and I could click in the 3D view. So this is a way of making a selection. Now, once you have a selection, you might want to export all of those grains to a new ROI or to a new multi ROI, or you might want to export all of this tabular data to a CSV. So this selection tool allows you to manipulate the selection of the table. So I have the selection that I've made either by selecting rows on the table or selecting in the 2D view or selecting in the 3D view. At any point I could invert the selection or I could invert it back. You can clear the selection to start over or if you want to export all of this information to a table, you could clear the selection and do a select all and then export to CSV. That would be a useful way of exporting all of the measurements. All right, so we have looked at different uh, tools here. I'll also note if you're, as we saw, you can select individual objects and then do a delete from ROI. So uh, maybe if I cleared my selection, maybe I can uh, turn, uh, well, let's try it this way. Let's uh, do this, do a control click here. Okay, now that one is selected and now that one, uh, uh, those are a little harder for me to catch with the mouse and those are quite small. So I've got the big one selected. I could delete that from the ROI. Now what I could do is I could uh, sort by volume and sort by ascending volume and select some from the table. So a lot of these really small ones are just the uh, those small individual pixels that are out there. And so uh, now I've selected too much. Again, I can clear my selection and uh, sort by ascending and do something like this. Now I can select multiple things like that and I can delete from ROI. I can also go into a histogram view. So let's look at that for a minute. Let's suppose I click on this button. Now I have a histogram view. Uh, I'm looking at the volume histogram. And so we see some grains that are large and some grains that are small. And then we see over here on this log plot a whole bunch of grains in this tiny bin over here. You can filter on this view. So if I select this filter and then uh, make this, uh, I drag to make this filter, you see I've got 132 grains in my workspace, but in this filter, I have isolated 82 grains. Now I have a hierarchical or tree analysis. So I can either select the 82 small grains I picked, which are all of these, so uh, nothing is selected right now. So it's all of these, and then I have the 50 grains I didn't select. So it's these grains, including some of this noise cluster business over here. Now what this means is I can uh, look at the histogram or the table and I can see all 132 grains or I can see just the small grains or just the big grains. Now I'm going to delete all of these small noise, uh, noise, mm, noise pixels here in just a minute. But I do want to draw your attention right now I am in this mode, color by statistical attribute. So we can color by volume or we can color by phi or color by theta or by aspect ratio. If I switch from color by statistical attribute to color by subgroup, then what we see is I have a group here called all and a group called complement. That's what Dragonfly decided to call it, but I could double click and call the all small pixel noise. And I could uh, double click this and call it real grains. And we can see that if I do select all, it's going to show me everything colored by subgroup. So instead of coloring by volume or by theta, it's coloring by subgroup. And I can see I've got a, a pretty good clustering. If I went back into the all and back into the uh, this view, I could uh, change my parameters. And now you could see, okay, that's a little too aggressive and come back here, etc. 
Now, if you click on one of these subgroups, now you're seeing over here in this population just these 82 grains, and so it's now recast. You could, in fact, create a new window if you want, which would be the smallest of the small, but that's getting a little nuanced. Now, what I can do is I can click on any subgroup and I can remove the subfilters. So here we see we've done some subgroup analysis, and maybe I want to go back to the table, and I want to select small pixel noise. Now this only has the 82 rows of the small pixel noise. I can select all. This is all 82 rows, not all 132 rows. So now I've got these selected, delete from ROI, and now when I select all, I'm left with just these real grains. Now, I mentioned that we can look at the histogram of a value like uh, volume or phi or theta or aspect ratio. You can also do two parameters at the same time. So if I select phi and then I do a control click for theta, then now I see a scatter plot of the phi and theta. And I can see there's some preferred orientations. I can actually, uh, I'll use the word segment, I can actually segment in this space. So before on the one dimensional histogram I could draw a one dimensional filter, here I can draw a two dimensional filter. So I can create a, oh let's, uh, yeah, uh, let's go, oh you know what, let's go back here, I just want to clear up this since I'm not using uh, those filters anymore. Now I've removed those filters, now I'm going to select here and once again do click on phi, control click on theta, and I'm going to create a new class called A, uh, called that's green, and a new class that's blue. And if I select the green class, I could now paint, and I could say uh, all of these should belong to one class, and uh, all of these should belong to a second class. And as we've seen, we can color by subgroup. And so we can see all of the ones in the first bin are going mostly one direction, and the ones that are in another bin are going a, se a separate direction, and the complement are the ones that are not labeled. So you can do this classification by a single value or by a second value. Now, if you then wanted to dive into this class of grains and then further segment by aspect ratio, you could do that. So you could do something like this. And now what you have is I have all grains that are split into orientation one and orientation two and unlabeled. And then in orientation two, I have them split into by aspect ratio. So you could label all of this, but from this top node, we're only seeing the first two branches, or that is this branch, this branch and complement. If we wanted to switch from branches to leaves, now we dive down all the way into the, the tip of the leaves. So you can see this sort of analysis is useful for doing visualization and inspection. So you can really refine your analysis. Now I'm gonna close all of this and open a separate uh, data set to show you something else you can do. Um, and we'll try and do it quickly. Uh, I'm gonna remove all of this data. Oh, actually, before I remove all of that data, if you have done an analysis in objects analysis and you want to revisit it, you can right click and go to analysis. And what you'll see here is I don't see any of the rows, uh, sorry, any of the columns of my table. They are still there. You can just come here to scalar values, everything you computed before, you can just click and it will show back up. Uh, so click OK. And now I have those as columns in my table again. So. They don't restore by default, but they are there in the data structure. They are preserved. You don't have to recompute them. Now, I'm going to do a new session, and I'm going to clear without saving, and then load another data set, which is the dry, is the segmented dry sand pack. Mm, waiting on Dragonfly to finish clearing out. It looks like we've got two Dragonflies running. Well, uh, well, uh, what? Well, maybe I won't do. Oh, did I lose my Dragonfly? Mm, let's. I fired something wrong, so let's not do a report. Let's go to my desktop. Can't access my desktop. Go to Dragonfly. And if we set up our screen right, we'll still be able to see the captions. So let's see if we can do that. And let's have a check on the time. Uh, yeah, we do have time to do a little bit more. So we are going to pull up the segmented sand grains, and I'll show you a couple more measurements you can make which might be useful for your analysis. All right. I do not want to restore the autosave file. I'm actually going to start on a new uh, topic. All right. So now we do have captions at the bottom of the screen, and we will... Uh, I'm going to import an ORS object that has my dry sand pack and some segmentation so we can look at it. So in this case, I have uh, these labeled grains. Don't need to worry about uh, that object. 
I've also created a cylinder and then I've inverted the cylinder. So suppose I'm interested in analyzing these separated grains in the sand pack. I may not want to uh, analyze any of the grains that are on the outside because maybe they're clipped by the reconstruction. I want to exclude those. You can do that as we've seen before by doing selecting a multi-ROI and then selecting ROI and I could do remove intersected. That should give me a new, new multi-ROI which doesn't have any of these uh, particles on the outside. So now we see we don't have any grains that were touching the grains on the outside and so now if I turn on 3D rendering of this data set, I'm going to double click to go full screen, we don't see any of the grains that were touching the outside and I can use the 3D opacity settings to hide everything that's not part of this data set and we can see we have uh, all of the complete grains. So if I right click on my multi ROI, I can of course go to the analysis panel and here in analysis, I can make measurements as we saw, such as volume and aspect ratio. I can also make this measurement max location Z and min location Z. I'm going to show you why I'm going to do this. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now, um, in my uh, multi ROI 3D settings, I'm going to turn up the highlight here. And I'm going to now color code my measurements not by this label which is using this discrete lookup table but instead I'm going to choose uh, min location Z. What this is showing me is it's showing me the objects that uh, based on their minimum coordinate on every one and so you see I have these incomplete grains at the top. I can actually remove those uh, by an analysis here. So if I look if I do an ascending sort on min location Z uh, sorry that is that ascending? Let's see, that's 3900 uh, and this is minus 14. If I scroll down and I select just the ones that have a minus 14 and we uh, turn down, we can see this is just the grains on the very bottom. And so by selecting all the grains that intersect with that top coordinate, that minus 14, I could then delete those from the ROI. And I, then I could do the exact same thing with max location Z. And we, whoops, we want to go the other direction. And so I could scroll all the way to the top and then grab these at the top that are all touching the very top. And we could delete those from the ROI. And now we do have all of these grains which we could color by label or color by measurement. So if I color by label, there are different lookup tables that are used to support the coloring by label. So there are these discrete lookup tables that help you see where the see the separated grains. Then when you're actually doing a measurement like volume or aspect ratio, then you might want to switch to something like this where you can uh, see a good color gradation uh, uh, sorted by volume. Now I will draw your attention to the fact that if I switch to the histogram view and I color by volume, the color coding you see over here is the same as the color coding you see over here. So if you see these green grains, you know they're, they're falling in here. And as we saw before, we could try and isolate grains based on volume and we might dive into this and say, what about these grains? Oh, you know what? The reason these grains are so large is they actually were not well separated. They're individual clusters and they have not been uh, separated. So you can see that these are all green and sorry, these are all blue and these are all different blue and these are all green. So you get a good idea. We could even uh, select. So if I select this and let's am I in select mode? Oops, we need to close that. Now if I'm in select mode and I select this cluster, Mm -hmm. I don't know why I can't get a selection. Maybe because I'm not on the table view. Anyway, the, the point is these are all clusters. If you wanted to try and do further separation of these because they were not separated in the initial round of separating grains, you could then take this analysis, go back to the table and say just these 42 clusters, I want to select all of them, export them to an ROI and then you could repeat the distance map measurement and the watershed on distance map to do separation of those individual grains and then you could fold those back into your multi ROI. So I think we've looked at just about everything on here except the merge uh, selected objects. So if you have two objects that were uh, are actually belong to the same object, you can do a merge. So if you have two grains that are both half grains, you could merge. You could select two individual rows and hit merge and they become one. So I think we've seen everything we need to see here. This uh, should give you an introduction to object analysis such that you can now go back and use it on your data for doing quantitative analysis. I'm going to return to the slides and take some questions. Let me see if I can pull up the questions and answers. And all right. So 
Um, let's start. There is a question. Is there a preview when you remove small pixels? Uh, there is not. So if you followed closely today, you saw that I used process islands and I just applied a hard cutoff of say everything smaller than 75 or 125 voxels. That just does it without giving you a preview. If you don't like the results, you can hit the undo on that ROI. If you want something more interactive, you can go all the way into the full-fledged objects analysis, make a voxel size or a volume measurement, and then filter interactively till you have what you like, and then remove. So the process islands is not meant to be an interactive process. It's supposed to be, if you kind of know you have a fixed cutoff, you can do it very quickly without having to go into the whole objects analysis interface. So that's the point there. Next question is, oh yes, the captions have disappeared. Sorry everyone, I'll try and get used to this captioning if I can keep this Chrome, uh, Google present loaded and caption going at the bottom of the screen while I use Dragonfly, then that should be helpful. So I'll just have to get used to that. Next question, phi and theta as well as aspect ratio can be biased measurements for very small objects, right? Yes, I think they probably can. I haven't given much thought to it. The You only have a few pixels on which the moment of inertia tensor is computed. And so you don't have a, a very good or a very nuanced measurement. So I suppose they could be biased by the lattice orientation of your image. Um, we could dive more deeply into that. It'd be interesting to discuss. Can we do this on an image stack? These measurements are made on any segmentation that you've done on an image stack. So it doesn't matter how you complete, completed or how you acquired the data, whether it's micro CT or electron microscopy or FibSim, as long as you can generate a 3D image stack and then do segmentation, then you can enter into this workflow and do objects analysis. Next question, could you please make porosity analysis distributed on the porous media height? So porosity per slice. Excellent question. That gives me something to present for tomorrow. So we will be doing slice analysis. So you would not do that specific measurement in the objects analysis, although yesterday I came up with a way you could do it with a little bit of a kludge, but I will show you the way of doing analyses like this on a with slice analysis. So I'll actually use the same sand pack and we'll look at porosity by slice, or if you can think of a data set in the Digital Rocks portal that should have differential porosity by slice, I could use it, but we'll stick with this one for now. Next question, can I change the style of the histogram, a solid plot instead of a bar plot? Well, inside the objects analysis, uh, let's have a quick look. The You don't have much, uh, much interface. Now, if I am looking at a histogram here, I can zoom in on the histogram and I can save the histogram. So I can zoom in on the histogram like this. That's not very useful. I can reset. I can save the histogram as a as a manuscript ready high resolution figure. So you can export it as, for example, uh, encapsulated postscript. Now, if I, I wanna draw your attention to this, it, ordinarily when I'm doing a measurement like volume, you'll see that it's color coded to match the on-screen coloring. If you don't want it color coded and you want it to be monochrome, so it's more appropriate for a manuscript, you can just click this button and turn off the color histogram by LUT. Now, having said all of that, if you can't get a good histogram the way you like it here, you can always take your entire table of data, go back to the table, select all, export to CSV, and then uh, work it up in Excel or some other tool. All right, next question. Next question is, uh, oops, done it, from Eduardo. The watershed algorithm tends to overestimate the segmentation. Can we tune the watershed parameters? The only parameters you have for the watershed are the seed multiroy that is used for expansion, the landscape function, and then whether you're doing a watershed with a connectivity of six or 26. So, and I'm not sure in Dragonfly we actually give you a menu item to choose six or 26. That could be done from the command line if you want. So there aren't really any parameters for you to tune. It's really gonna de depend very critically on your seeds. So if your seeds are too small, you'll get over fragmentation. If they're too big, you'll get conjoined grains. So you might want to spend some time on the seed ROI and editing it uh, interactively to get what you want so that you can get a good watershed expansion. Next question, if there are a large amount of islands or noise in the images, can I filter these in this method? I've tried denoising using this method, however, it may not work. So when you have something like we saw today with the appetite grains, you really have two options. You can smooth the image before you do your thresholding or segmentation, in which case you're not likely to pick up any of those in the first place. Or you could do the segmentation and then in the segmentation domain, that is the ROI or the multi-ROI, then you can do a 3D smoothing or you can do an opening or you could do a process island. So those are all ways of getting rid of those small false positives. 
However, the preferred choice, I believe, is to train a deep learning model and it won't pick up any of those grains in the first place and you won't have to do any image filtering. That's sort of the topic for the lesson on the CCEM workshop for Thursday is how you don't have to do filtering anymore. You can just do deep learning and it uh, is, mm, I don't want to use the word immune, I'll say insensitive. It's insensitive to the image artifacts like noise. Next question, can Dragonfly process multi-channel images, 2D and 3D, and assign different colors to different channels and blend the colors in the display? Well, it can. So if you've got multiple channel imaging, so I understand that's not something we really talked about today, uh, but we could, uh, we don't have a really, I don't have two images loaded. Um, that'd be a good lesson, multi-channel imaging. Maybe I could add that to the topic next week and we could load in the dual energy CT scan. So in the Digital Rocks portal, there is in fact, a dual energy scan contributed by some workers at uh, Petrobras and by Masha Prajanovic at UT. Uh, maybe I'll load that and we'll talk about what you can do with multi-channel for overlaying the 2D rendering and the 3D rendering and how you can use it to inform your segmentation or inform a deep learning model. That's a good idea. We, it won't be specifically about dual energy analysis, but it will be about multi-channel imaging and multi-channel visualization. So we'll add that as a topic and maybe we can get into that next week. Next question, is it possible to extract data from objects analysis panel into a text file? So yes, you can just select everything in the table and then uh, choose export to CSV. Uh, uh, just two more questions. I'm, I am able to see the questions only after you answer them. Can I do something about that? Hmm, what can we do about that? Uh, I don't know, I'll ask my colleagues if they figured out why the Zoom uh, configuration is different this week from last week. So I would like you to be able to see the questions because then you could thumb up the questions. And then my final comment is someone says, yes, dual energy. So uh, great for the enthusiasm. So we'll add that for the topic. So that wraps up all of the content for today. Thank you for your attention. And please uh, tune in tomorrow where we'll talk about slice analysis. Maybe we'll look at porosity by slice. Then catch the CCEM workshops later this week. And we'll be back with lesson 23 again on Monday. So tomorrow lesson 22 and then back on Monday with lesson 23. So thank you everyone. Stay healthy, be good to each other. And we'll see you tomorrow.